And right now it's time for that time when we talk to our special guest. Tonight our special guest is political commentator Chris Trotter. It's countdown time to what is proving to be a very exciting and close election. Just four weeks and five days before we cast our votes. Chris is confident it's just Cinders to lose. Chris Trotter, welcome to The Beat Goes On. A we are great honored. pleasure to be here. We are honoured right in the middle of your political campaign. Who do you call? Oh, Who I'm going to call it for um, Jacinda Ardern. Ooh. I think she'll be our Prime Minister yeah. by, um, by October. Mm. Now, that's a very brave call. Uh, well, I think she's something of a phenomenon. Mm. And, um, and dear Bill English... Uh, is not a phenomenon. Sorry, Up against a rock star, uh, a mere rock. Sorry, uh, yeah, a mere rock. I think is going to be um, uh, finding the going rather tough. Hasn't things changed? You know, I will say this, Chris. Let me say this: that uh, Cameron Brewer came on the show about four weeks ago. He's uh, the other side of the spectrum, and we both said, "Isn't it a dead election? There's just nothing happening." It all exploded about two weeks after. So uh, first of all, let's look at the Green Party. Everyone's still puzzled. Did she have to make that? Uh, was somebody going to blackmail her and tell the world that? Why did she do it? Why did she bother? Well, I feel desperately sorry for Materia Toure because what she was trying to do, mm. I think, was admirable. Uh, and that was to completely revolutionise um, the way social welfare is delivered in New Zealand, to make a bonfire of all the uh, really humiliating mm. uh, restrictions, sanctions they call them, to dramatically increase the benefit, uh, which is long overdue. Uh, and she understood that simply announcing that policy would get a little bit of publicity and then it would probably die. And so she thought, look, I will tell my story and I will explain that when I was a solo mum, I deliberately withheld information mm. from uh, social welfare so that I wouldn't have my benefit cut. Now, the way she framed it uh, was that I wouldn't see my baby go hungry uh, and so I was willing to lie to the authorities. Now, if that had been the story, pure and simple, then I think she would have survived and the policy would have gone from strength to strength in terms of public mm. support. Unfortunately, the story wasn't that simple. And I don't know whether she was naive or whether she just trusted to luck. Uh, if it was the latter, then she was a very silly girl mm. because... A, this is a very small country and everybody knows everybody else's business. Uh, and B, uh, luck is not something you can rely upon mm. if you're going to put a story like that out in front of the nation's journalists. They are going to go after it like a mm. pack of dogs after they a do, river. They do, don't they? Mm. Well, I thought maybe uh, one of those earlier friends of hers that probably boarded her place were, had threatened to... Um, uh, out her f to the social welfare and so what she did was well why don't I do it myself mm. um, and get it out and there's a chance that I'll survive this. Yeah uh, I've heard that. Mm. Uh, I don't think that is the case. Okay, I'm, I'm just um, I, think, I think one of the things that she really suffered from uh, was the lack within the Greens of some really hard-nosed advisors mm. who when she raised the prospect of doing this said Okay, can can understand mm. where you're going with this, but you're coming with us for a couple of hours. We're going to shut you in a room mm. with a tape recorder, and we're not letting you out. And we are going to ask you every single question we can think of in relation to the story that you're about to tell. And if you can't answer, or if you kind of look worried or go, mm. oh, I can't really go into that, we are not going to let you mm. do this. And that never happened. And I don't think that happened. Uh, and, sure. and, and she has suffered, and her party mm. has suffered for the lack of that kind mm. of... I mean, it's got a terrible uh, name. It's called wargaming. Mm. Uh, and, of course, the Greens would run a mile from a term like wargaming, but in the, in, in the absence of a better term, that is what they should have done. In other words, how is this going to play? Is there anything that you haven't told us? Mm. 
what are the media going to find when they dig into this? Because they will dig into this, not just with a teaspoon, with an effing shovel, you know. <laughs> now, the very next thing that happens is that... Um, um, well, they jump up in the polls. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, this is what set <laughs> the, that the great ball rolling, oh, yeah. because by shifting the polls so dramatically in yeah. their favour, all at the expense of Labour, or nearly all at the expense of Labour, they precipitated the fall of Andrew Little. And he said, I don't think... Um I can take this anymore. That's right. He mm. said, uh, I've, I've been talking about resigning. <laughs> well, no, Andrew, no, you can't say that yeah. on the six o'clock news because all people hear is I'm resigning. Mm. Uh, You're not and, thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And so it proved. But yeah. then, wow. you know, all of a sudden, Jacinda, Jacinda happened. Yeah. And people it, loved it, her. Yeah, it was there literally from the moment yeah. she strode out of that caucus room and up to the microphone in the old legislative chamber leader. yeah for the, for her first mm. press conference media conference as leader and she just stunned <gasps> not just the press gallery and that takes some doing because mm. these are pretty hardened old you know <laughs> fighters um they're they are a hard to impress yeah, very you know, cynical. and b yeah, yeah. enormously yeah. cynical people yeah. um and she wowed them. Yeah. She called them all by their names. <laughs> and when someone asked her, you know, some sort of off question, she just threw it straight back at them. She yeah. said, what are you saying I can't? Barry or whoever yeah. it was. And of course. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, she was just in charge. And suddenly the country goes, oh, Labour has a leader <laughs> for the first time since Helen. <laughs> Labour has a leader. <laughs> Oh, yippee yahoo! And whoa, up she goes in the polls. The big question now, of course, uh, and is. Hence your opening statement yeah, of the show. That's right. Yeah. The big question now, and, and this will prove whether I'm uh, you know, mm. a seer or, or an idiot, is whether or not uh, in the next polls, and there's one coming out very soon, uh, there's been a drop, even a slight drop, in Nationals' numbers. Mm. Because if all Jacinda can do, is take votes from the Greens, which he's already yeah. done, and, and take, first. take a few votes mm. from New Zealand first, and leave Nationals vote where so it is, it is. Um, then it will be a very run, close run thing yeah. and she may not make it. But if she can even even two or three percent mm. off of Nationals, Nationals current yeah. polling of you know 44, 45, mm. she'll be in. Mm. No, I, I, I think I think you're right. You know, with your opening statement, I think there it's it's changed the whole dynamic of absolutely. It was going to be a very boring election with national. It was going to be a, a well, it was going to be one grey man versus another grey yeah. man. It was going to be the battle of the grey men, and yeah. everybody was going to be switching to the other yeah. channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing the, grey about Jacinda. <laughs> <laughs> Roll on the twenty third, absolutely. The of September, not absolutely. far away. Looking forward to it. But Chris, um, you're a political animal. And they I've been called that, not um, always in a kind way. <laughs> <laughs> in a very kind manner, you're a political animal. Now, what does it take to make a, a political animal? You've loved politics all your life, haven't you? And, um, and we're going to talk about your dad, too. Mm. Fantastic role that he played in New Zealand with Country Calendar. But first of all, where did it, where did it all start as a baby boomer? Chris, how, what, what wonderful day and year did you enter this, this world? Well, I'm right in the middle of the cohort, born yeah. in 1956. So 56. halfway between yep. 1946 You're a classic baby boom. Yeah, and, and, and the end of the baby boom era yeah. in the mid-60s. So, yeah. yeah, I'm right in the heart of it all. Yep. Um, I like to tell people about a book that was published, I think, by UNICEF back in the days when the United Nations was still, yeah, was still <laughs> this, this, this great beacon yeah. um, lighting up the post-war world. Uh, and it was a book full of photographs and, uh, and sayings from cultures all over the world uh, and quotations from some of the great writers, scientists, mm -hmm. historians, jurists. Uh, and it was called The Family of Man. And it ingrained in me this, this strong sense um, of human equality uh, and the sense that um, we are one family. family. Mm, we are humanity 
and that all of the divisions into cultures and nations and what have you um, is in a sense um, artificial and that the great strength mm. of the book of course was that it showed that no matter um, what colour we were, what creed we adhered to, what countries we came from, the essence of what it was to be human was the same. You know. now that that mm. wonderful moment that you had as you looked at that book, it's been fought today still in America with Charlottesville, uh, with the uh, mm. white supremacists mm. uh, marching in mm. the street. It's funny how it's 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 read its its uh, head again. Hasn't well, it? you know, they say it only takes two generations um, for the the lessons of history to be to forgotten. Be forgotten. Mm. Mm. Isn't that strange how it's... I mean, the, the idea, you know, uh, that people could march down a street carrying swastika flags and flaming torches proudly and openly uh, in, a, in a nation like uh, the United States of America is just astonishing. You know, President Trump talked about, you know, uh, the anti-fascist demonstrators not having a permit and being very, very violent, very, very violent. <laughs> And somebody, um, <laughs> either of our generation or one, one older than ours, our parents' generation, they, they put something up on Twitter which I thought was brilliant. It was a picture f taken from the D-Day landings and it just said they didn't have a permit and they were very, very violent. <laughs> In other words, you know, there was a time when being very, very violent against Nazis was considered a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was politically correct. Indeed. <laughs> now tell us about your dad, because I think that the story you, you've already told me, and I was wow, gobsmacked. Your father was a farmer. Well, he was. He yeah. he, he was in the Royal New Zealand Air Force uh, mm. during World War Two, and he came back, and I think he got what the, what were they called rehab farm, mm. uh, and it was quite a small farm in North Otago, but that's where I grew up. Uh, and at the age of 40, he looked around and uh, he tried to persuade some of his neighbours to sell them some of their land because his acreage was just too, too small. small to make a living. And when, when uh, he couldn't, he thought, well, I'm going to have to sell up. And so he did. And he went and became a disc jockey at 3XC <laughs> in Timaru, of what all a places. Great story, yeah. uh, and from the there, idea, yeah. and from there, he went on to become a rural broadcaster. Mm -hmm. He may have had his sights set on that all along. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. And and he became a rural broadcaster in Invercargill. Mm -hmm. And from Invercargill, he went to Wellington to work on uh, rural broadcasting at the national level. And he became involved with a program called Country Calendar. Wow. And, and his he, name was? His name was Tony, Tony Trotter. Trotter. That's right. And we all know that name. Was and Patrick he Ellen. was the yeah. one who picked the theme, the one he that they, the still, yeah. they still use. And he was the person who gave us the country calendar we know today. Mm -hmm. Before then, it had been a studio-based program. But Dad was the one who took the camera crews out of the studio, See. onto the farms, yeah. interviewed farmers in situ, showed people New Zealand yeah. uh, farming, uh, uh, life uh, au naturel. Thanks yeah. to your dad, that is the program I never miss every week. I'm sure all our baby boomer yep. audience... It's would, still up there among the most popular yeah. programs do, do on television. Do you watch it every week? I don't. I do. I, I don't, love it. Yeah. Um, mainly because my wife can't stand it. Oh. <laughs> She's a townie yeah, from yeah. Hamilton, you know. Well, is dad still with us? No, no. Oh, okay. Dad died... Um, about 18 months ago, at oh, the age, 18 months ago, age yeah. Of, yeah. of 91. Now, I had the feeling he had, but I wasn't yes, sure of my yes, yes. What a wonderful tradition for you for, to, to have well, in the family that Dad It was interesting here. because uh, he became a TV producer at the absolute peak of mm. producer-driven television yeah. in New Zealand, which was the early to mid-70s. Uh, and they all had to uh, produce, direct, mm. you know, create a program mm. in order to make it into sort of yeah. the, the world of yeah. television producers. Yeah. And I, I, I helped him. I, I wrote a script for him, which he, which he used. Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, gradually I sort of came to know broadcasting and, yeah. and then I got involved in, in uh, trade union politics and then Labour Party politics and was interviewed and 
Then, of course, um, uh, uh, TV3 was launched. And, and they asked me to come on to the Ralston Group. Mm. And so that was another way uh, into television. And from there, I went on to election night broadcasts. Chris, you're famous. Yeah. You're famous. Well, yeah, I always <laughs> like to say to people, not A-list, not B-list, C-list. <laughs> now, who would Dad have voted for in this election? Oh, I think he would have voted uh, for the Labour Party. He was a Labour man, was he? Uh, even though he was a farmer? Well, uh, the, the National Party, I think he probably did vote for the National Party in the early 60s, but of course yep. that was the National Party of Keith Holyoke yep. and Ralph Hannan uh, and Tom Shand, uh, and it was much more of a Liberal Party mm. under Holyoke than a Conservative Party as it became under mm. Rob Muldoon. Muldoon. Um, but I think he switched to Labour uh, about 1972. And he, he, he was put off Labour by Rogernomics, and he was very active in the alliance, mm. uh, as a matter of fact. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, were he alive today, he would probably give Jacinda a crack. Yeah. Now, Chris, this has gone so fast, but let's have a quick roundup before you go. And uh, big thanks for all us baby boomers having the... Uh, it's a great pleasure the, to be here. The number one baby boomer political commentator in New Zealand. <laughs> um, Winston, uh, Winston, he's taking a bit of a hit, taking a bit of damage with the Jacinta rising in the poll. That you know they, mm. they love that place of having about ten percent, eleven percent. It's in fact it was gone down to eight. So mm. how's that going to affect Winston? He won't be the kingmaker anymore, do you think? Or he may well he, be on the night. Still, yeah. Uh, I don't think he's going to get the sort of numbers that yeah. he was anticipating even a few weeks ago. Mm. I think had. Fate not intervened in the persons mm. of Materia and Jacinda. He would have been the he king was, maker, definitely. He was on yeah. the way towards close to 20% of the votes, yes, I think. exactly. I don't think he's going to get anywhere near that now, mm. uh, but I think he will get enough mm. to be able to uh, put Jacinda into the um, yeah. beehive. Uh, and he'll do that, I think, with a perfectly clear conscience because I think by the end of the campaign, uh, Jacinda will be either level-pegging with National or perhaps even slightly ahead. And the Greens, where are they going? Oh, to I think the Greens um, uh, will be very lucky to scrape in with five mm. or six percent. Wow. Yeah, I thought they have taken mm. a huge hit. And if they get back into Parliament, they can consider themselves very lucky indeed. Mm. Mm. Well, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Well, you yeah. know, I think it was Harold Macmillan, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, who told one of his flunkies, you know, that. Yes, things were going well. They've never had it so good, but you know that may not be true tomorrow. <laughs> and someone said, "But why, sir? Why?" And he leaned forward and he said, "Events, dear boy. Events." events. <laughs> <laughs> and if ever, if ever Harold Macmillan's uh, famous quip yeah. uh, has been proved, it's over the yeah. last few weeks. Events, dear boy. Oh, events. Really? Well, it's Im amazing because we were so worried about the fact it was going to be the most boring election in history and it's turned out completely different. Quite the opposite. Chris, you're wonderful. We're going to see you again on The Beat Goes On. I'm we happy to come back. We this is a very, very <laughs> pleasant way uh, to spend one's time a, on television. A wise advisor. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.